We adopted our dog Hero from the Rancho Cucamonga Animal Shelter on March 19th, 2016. When we went to pay the adoption fees, they said no charge, since Hero, whose shelter name was Pee Wee, was estimated to be seven to eight years old and weighed 85 pounds at the time, so he qualified as a senior. Senior dogs have their adoption fees waived to encourage adoption, as older dogs are harder to find homes for. Hero was also a large breed, which was strike two, and strike three, he was a bully breed, being a mastiff pit bull mix, so his prospects for adoption were pretty slim. Even so, he was a popular dog at the shelter since he got along with other dogs so well, and before we brought him home, two other families had attempted to adopt him, but they brought him back to the shelter because he had intense separation anxiety and would physically destroy things like doors or other barriers that kept him from being close to his humans. The real reason we brought Hero home that day, though, was because of the three dogs we met, he was the only one who got along with Nori, our cardigan Welsh Corgi, who we've had since 2011 when she was a puppy. Maybe got along with is a stretch. Nori was super nervous that day and wasn't being very friendly to the other dogs, but basically Hero, being his mellow gentleman self, ignored her agitated barking and gave us a friendly greeting. Since tolerating Nori Barks was a top priority for a potential new dog in our family, that earned Hero many points with Mommy, as well as a second interview where we decided to take him home. Now, Hero was always a striking and impressive dog. He quickly gained weight until he was closer to 95 to 100 pounds, and his mastiff genes gave him an imposing stance and a sleek and muscular build that always got him compliments when we'd take him out for walks or hikes on local trails. His coat was white and gray, and his head and jaws were just just massive. Even though he weighed around 100 pounds, his neck and skull were comparable in size to dogs that weigh 150 to 200. Hero did come with some scars from his mysterious past life though. One was along his snout just below his right eye, which we always theorized came from that time he rescued a burning bus full of school children, because he is a hero after all, but more likely he cut himself while escaping or attempting to escape from a crate or kennel, because Hero greatly values his freedom. We discovered this within the first week or two of adopting him as we were attempting some crate training, and while we were out, he simply tore down the metal grated front panel of the crate so he could escape. Then he just laid down on the rug right in front of it. He didn't mind being there, he just really didn't like being in the crate. He also came with horrendously cropped ears, and we always wondered what he might have looked like with his natural ones. Probably a lot less intimidating. We do not approve of ear cropping or tail docking with dogs in our family, and we got got used to telling people that, no, we didn't do that to him, but I often wish I could smack whoever did. They did a shamefully poor job taking way more than was necessary, even if you think cropping is okay, and they left poor Hero with only the tiniest of nubs at the top of each one, and a lifetime of ear problems, since those ear flaps typically keep out dust and dirt so the ear canals can stay clean. I must give full credit to my wife, who was the chief ear cleaner outer during Hero's time with us, and thankfully with the supply of cotton balls and ear cleaner juice, they'd get a regular flushing out, which Hero always enjoyed immensely. Beyond that, Hero had a moderate case of canine hygroma at first, calloused patches on his elbows likely caused by extensive time spent lying down on concrete, but with a move to a softer indoor lifestyle and a bit of help from a hygroma protective brace, they healed up and only remained as scars. Our family quickly adapted to having a big old pit bull mastiff in our lives, regularly appreciating his oversized paws and his huge tongue and his overall largeness in general. And while yes, he developed a great talent for standing wherever I wanted to move to next, leading me to develop and eventually perfect the hero shimmy where I attempted to maneuver past him to get wherever I wanted to go. This also meant that contact with Hero became a constant in my life. And that was his intent. Hero imprinted on me within a day. And after that, he always wanted to be wherever I was, giving Hero a pat on the head or some butt scritches, which he always Always enjoyed became so common that I almost took it for granted at times, but Hero had an insistent way of pushing his big old head up under your hand if he wanted your undivided attention, and despite his regal bearing, his intense gaze, and his deep and intimidating big boy bark that he would only let loose if he sensed immediate danger or possibly a cat, <coughs> Hero really was just a big soft baby underneath it all. He loved to be curled up on the couch or in one of his many doggy beds, most ideally right next to me or his mom. 
He just wanted pets and scratches and love all the time, and he would let you know how happy those things made him by purring. Yes, Hero used to purr, or at least that's what it sounded like to us. And if you've never had a 100 pound Pitbull Mastiff curled up next to you on the couch purring contentedly, then you really are missing out. If I or my wife weren't available, Hiro would content himself to lie in bed, although we did document his struggles with beds over the years. When you have such long legs and a propensity for squirming, beds can be pretty dang tricky. We'd often wake up to see him sprawled out like this, or like this. And of course, whenever there were two or more beds stacked up, that meant it was a special place made for a hero nap. Our bed was the only place Hero wasn't allowed, and he accepted that somewhat grudgingly, as Nori was keen to point out that that was a privilege she enjoyed, but he did not. He was really just too big for that. Nori and Hero did develop a healthy sibling relationship over time though, and while they weren't big cuddlers together, they would share the couch and the trunk area of my wife's Subaru pretty amicably. Hero loved to go on trips, whether it was to the beach or the mountains or local parks. And one of the things my wife misses most now is just seeing his big old head poking up over the back seat in her rear view mirror with a big smile and his tongue lolling out. When we'd take the dogs out and about, Nori would take on the role of instigator while Hiro was the enforcer. Somehow having a huge big brother dog backing her up made Nori a bit bolder than she had been before. So she would seek out troublemakers or other things she disapproved of, bark to let Hiro know, then he'd move in to let the offending rock or tree or wisp of cloud know that Nori was not to be trifled with. It was a pretty good system. One thing Hiro was never very good at was playing. Somehow it was just never a skill that he developed. While Nori has always been an excellent fetch player, Hero's ball retrieving skills always left a little bit to be desired. Good boy! Okay, one more, let's catch. Oh! <laughs> and that's okay though. He could do a good catch every once in a while, and he was keenly interested in water sprayed from the hose, although he wasn't quite sure how to actually catch it. Just look how agile he is though. I was always impressed with Hero's ability to jump and run in the first few years that we got him, even though he was already technically a senior dog. And that was life with Hero for the first three years or so. He was a very happy dog, and we could always tell how much he loved his family. Whether out and about, hiking through the snow, chilling at the beach, or enjoying a day at the park, or at home, curled up on the couch with his humans, or rolling around on his back going, Oh, Hero. Yeah, those are funny noises. And then, of course, having a brief fit of sneezes. Or burrowing under the couch cushions or under us, like he used to do all the time as well. Or just passed out in bed with his epic snores reverberating through the house. We did all that we could to make sure Hero was enjoying his life. After introducing him in a vlog shortly after he was adopted, Hero became a fixture in many of the videos on my channel too. Whether it was poking his head into our awesome hardware live streams, snoring gently in the background audio, or lounging in the garage while I built a computer or whatever I was doing, Hero quickly became a fan favorite. He also had a spot on his side that he'd try to scratch with his back leg pretty often, and if I scratched it for him, oh my gosh, did he enjoy that. It was Hero's special spot, and it deserves calling out here just for posterity. I think the only thing that would really upset him is when his family was away. Whenever I was out, he'd wait at the door like this, or he'd treat my wife to this, until I returned home, and occasionally he'd do this to the couch cushions. 
Our lives changed pretty abruptly in 2019 though, after we'd had Hero for about three years. And I documented this in a personal update video at the time. But to sum up, on April 25th, Hero suffered from the sudden onset of vestibular disease, which causes a loss of balance, disorientation, a head tilt, and irregular jerking eye movements called nystagmus. It happens without forewarning, and at the time, I thought he was having a stroke or something. But fortunately, many dogs do recover from it, as Hero did over the course of several months. He was never quite the same afterwards, though. The nystagmus in his eyes took a few weeks to return to normal, and the head tilt gradually went away as well but his balance was always a bit shaky post-vestibular disease. His gait was a bit wobbly and he would occasionally just fall over. He'd always bounce back up with a goofy smile though. He was built like a tank, so he never took much damage. And while I could tell that the condition affected his confidence level somewhat, his personality was mostly unchanged. This did mark the beginning of the hero doesn't jump anymore era though. So I got myself accustomed to lifting our big boy into and out of the car when we'd go on trips, which he tolerated and I managed just barely. He did still weigh close to 100 pounds after all. The other big change that happened pretty much that same week was the birth of our daughter, Hannah, on May 4th, 2019. That's a whole saga itself, and while the new baby was certainly a distraction from the medical problems Hero was having, her birth also necessitated some fundamental changes in our daily lives that even now I don't think I have proper perspective on. Making this video and looking back over the photos and videos we took at the time has actually been one of the first times I've attempted to step back and think about how much has changed. Some of the changes were good, and it makes me happy to see that by the 4th of July 2019 or so, Hero was looking much more like his former self. He was much recovered from the vestibular disease and the second medical emergency he had three days before Hana was born. More on that in the personal update video if you're interested. And I know now that he still had several years remaining to be a good boy and love his family. At the same time though, his mommy and daddy were now very preoccupied being a new mommy and daddy. And there are noticeably fewer dog photos in our roles and many more baby photos after May 2019. Hero, for his part, was a very good big brother to Hana, and while we were very cautious introducing him since he was so large and now clumsy too, he has always been a calm protector for her and was infinitely patient as she was learning and growing. We almost even settled back into some semblance of routine by late 2019, and I felt confident enough to proceed with some home renovation plans we had been discussing for years. And I was pretty happy, albeit tired from irregular sleep patterns with raising Hana and walking dogs and planning out the next phase of our lives. And you probably know what happened next. With just about a month of work still to go on our renovation, COVID-19 hit the US and the world and lockdown started in March 2020. And then a couple years went by. Things got a little... I don't know, it's hard to assess the pandemic situation and all the baggage it brought with it in this context, but we were able to finish out our remodel and then slowly add things like a couch and a rug to kind of tie the room together in the following months. There were happy times and amazing moments with the now one-year-old Hana, and there were hard times as well, but Hiro was always there to provide his specialty, comfort, and affection. And as Hana got older, and now she's three, and Hiro was there the whole time for that. I have pictures of her with him when he's still taller than she is. He's so big and she's so small and he was always so gentle with her. And he still loved his walks, although we could tell that his back legs were getting stiffer and causing him more and more pain. And the walks got shorter over time. And as I look at pictures from 2021, I can see Hana getting bigger and growing up so quickly while Hiro grows noticeably older. More white hairs around his snout, his step getting a bit slower and even more wobbly, and the telltale signs of chronic pain becoming more apparent. His brow would get furrowed and his happy smile would stretch into a grimace. And it kills me because, as my wife has said, his spirit always stayed strong, even as his body was giving out on him. I'm glad to say that we were able to indulge Hero's spirit of adventure many times in the last year of his life. We had multiple family trips to Bass Lake and Yosemite, and we could always tell how happy Hero was to be along for the ride to be there with his family as close as he could possibly get. His last Christmas was spent at my parents' cabin, surrounded by love and wearing his favorite red sweater. He got to meet his new cousin Solani, the Vizsla pup that my sister got in February 2022, 
and he enjoyed many visits to the park and walks on warm spring days in the past few months, even if he could only make it around the block. In his last week, Hiro got one last bath so he'd feel fresh and clean. He didn't like that much, but he did enjoy the ear cleaning that followed. He spent an afternoon with his mom, dad, Hana, and Nori at his favorite park. And then on Tuesday, May 24th, he collapsed after just trying to walk out our back door. His gums turned white, and once again, I thought he was having a stroke and he was about to die on us right there. But Hiro did what Hiro does. He bounced back, and while he couldn't get up for the rest of that evening, he was on his feet again the next day, although he could only take a few steps. On Wednesday, May 25th at 4 p.m., we brought him into our vet. He walked in on his own, and I'm very proud of him for that. His mom and I stayed with him until the end. My last memory is of him lying there, as if asleep, looking peaceful, and with no more pain. I unclipped his collar and said goodbye. I wanted to make this video to tell the story of Hero's life from my perspective. I am hoping that it helps me process, and if you made it this far, thank you for watching and listening to his story. It hasn't been easy to tell. He was such a good boy, and I miss him so, so much. I think people are always growing and changing, and personal philosophies or worldviews that made sense years ago might not make sense as you get older. I've often felt lost and confused in the years since we first adopted Hero, but he was always there to offer me support and comfort. And that's probably been the hardest part for me in the past week. Hero was always there. He was always here. I work from home and he followed me everywhere, so the unconscious cues that I have to look out for him or to make sure he's next to me because I know if he's not, he's gonna come find me soon, those cues don't just go away. And even a week plus later, I still find myself looking for him, but he's not there anymore. And eventually I will learn to be okay with that. But back to the personal philosophy thing, I've had to adjust and simplify mine, and these days it boils down to this. I believe we are put on this earth to love and be loved. And I think Hero did that better than anyone ever has. I miss you so much, big boy.